Hello everyone, Robert Johnson of Let'sRun.com here. As a former college coach, I'm going to put on my coaching hat here for a moment and analyze the men's 1500 meters from last weekend's USATF Outdoor Championships. After the race, I got a text from a buddy and he was like, how in the hell does a 349 miler finish third to last at USA's? And what it's referring to is this man right here, Johnny Gregoric, in yellow. He was definitely third to last at USA's. And I wanted to figure out how that happened. I mean, how does someone in that type of fitness get third to last? And what you're about to see in this video is a textbook example put on by Johnny Gregorek of how not to run a 1,500 meters. He makes several mistakes in this race from start to finish. At one point, he violates my cardinal rule of 1,500 meter racing. You're going to see it all. A little disappointing, he's a fellow Ivy League guy like myself, and his dad's a former Ivy League coach, but... Horrific tactically. Anyways, at the same time, you're also going to see this guy, Ben Blankenship. He puts on a textbook example of how to run a 1,500-meter race. He doesn't leave lane one basically the entire race. He stays on the rail. People would say he's boxed in. No, he doesn't panic. He relaxes. He stays in lane one the entire race. When it's time to race and, and really go for the spots, the Team USA in the final 250 meters, he's got a kick left, and he kicks to fourth, and he makes the team. So that's who we're going to be focusing on is these two in this race. And at the end of the race, what you're going to see is Gregoric runs an extra, and by my estimation, 17.9 meters compared to Blankenship. And at the end of the race, he's only 1.9 something seconds behind, which is like 14.2 meters behind. So if he had run a better tactical race, he might be going to the World Championship. So, that's what we have to look forward to. Let's get underway. Gorek, a little unsteady there at the start, but he doesn't fall start, thankfully. Watch Blankenship here. He's never going to leave this spot the entire race. And watch Gregorek here in the back. He's going to be in the back and way out wide for most of this baby. So, we're heading into the first turn. And basically, I'm going to try to estimate how much longer they run on every turn. Here's Gregorek. I'm estimating he's basically on the inside of lane two. Blankenship is over here on the inside of lane one. That's going to be a one full lane difference. Every turn, for every lap that you run in um, lane two versus lane one, like a full lane difference, 7.67 meters. So on one turn, let's just call it 3.8 meters. So if there's a one turn difference, you're going to run an extra 3.8 meters. So on this first turn here, Johnny G., <clears throat> That's Johnny Gregorek's uh, middle uh, nickname. He's going to run an extra 3.8 meters. They're out really slow here. Everyone's just chilling. Um, when a slow tactical race, I used to always say when I was coaching, look, one of the best spots to be is in the front or in the back. Um, you know, if you're in the back, you never box and stuff like that. But again, 47 seconds here for the first 300. Nothing much is going on. We're going to go into the second turn here. We're going to have the exact same thing we had in the first turn. Gregorek. He's in on the back. He's running in the inside of lane two, right there. And Blankenship is on the inside of lane one. So that's another 3.8 extra meters for Gregorek. Um, you know, they, they 64, 71, they're 400, but Gregorek has run an extra seven meters, 7.67 meters, as compared to Blankenship. Now, get ready for the third turn here. You're going to see the biggest mistake of the race for Gregorek. Look how wide he is. He's out into the outside of lane three. That's not a problem here. We're running really slow, running a straightaway. I don't have a problem with that. He's gonna run the turn wide, which I don't even have a problem with that either. Except my number one rule as a coach is, if you make a move wide up to the front in an 800 and 1500, you've gotta go all the way to the front. Do never make a move wide and then end up in the back. You've just wasted a ton of ground. Now, in the 800, you've only got one move. Sometimes in the 1500, you can do two moves. But this is a, just a catastrophic mistake here. Watch what he does on this turn. There's Gregorek. Everyone's antsy. He goes wide. He moves up. But, again, he doesn't go all the way. I mean, he, he's... Let's look at this right here. He, he, he's almost there. He's going to the front. I'm going to stop it here We're just in a second. Boom. At the 139 mark, he's like, what, 
two meters, three meters from the fit, from the front. Johnny, you just run like literally. He was in the outside of lane two on that turn. I'm going to be generous and say he ran an extra five meters on that turn. It was probably an extra six meters. It was probably like a lane and a half, almost two lanes. But all he's got to do is run a few extra meters, and he's in a perfect spot. You know, that's the thing. I always said, guys, you can run in the back, but put yourself in position, you know, I always said by a 1,000, but you can catch people off guard. They're running so slow in this lap at 67. It's not hard to make this extra movement. Run an extra six or seven meters, but get yourself in a big spot. Instead, he's going to find himself moving back here. And watch this guy. Eric Avila is going to make the move that Johnny Gregoric makes. needs to make. He's going to go all the way up and into the front. Perfectly done in the next bit here. So watch Gregoric. He's right there. Oh, my God, Gregoric. You're in on this. Just go another three meters. Get up. Go. But no. Avila is going to do what you should be doing. So oh, Avila does it. Gregoric goes to the back. And again, we're going to have another turn where Gregoric is on the outside. He's actually just to the side of Blankenship there. It's going to be a full turn. Another 3.8 meters. So we come to the 800 meter mark. Gregoric actually at this point is going to move up. 2096 for the leaders. But we've got 800. He's already running. You add it all up together. He's already run an extra 16.6 meters as compared to Blankenship. So at this point, he does put himself in a good position. Maybe the, maybe the, the, the coaching advice was be in a good spot, you know, heading into the 1,000 meters. He's in a perfect spot. He's right next to the leader. But the problem is, he's, again, he's run close to an extra 20 meters. On this turn, he runs on the outside of lane one. Blankenship's on the inside of lane one. So uh, Blankenship is saving ground. I'm saving he's saving like 1.2 meters on this turn. Um, but... You know, again, look at Blankenship. He never panics. All these guys up here wasting energy. Blankenship, he's, Blankenship has not left the rail, and somehow he's in second, third place. It's unbelievable. So we're heading into the final lap. Um, actually, let's just rewind just a little bit there. Am I, is this rewinding? Oh, I'm going the wrong way there. There we go. Um, I forgot to show you something here, a cardinal descent. So Gregoric got himself in a perfect spot here. I forgot, I forgot when I was focusing on Blankenship. He's in a perfect spot. But he makes a, another horrific mistake here as we approach to the bail. He's in a perfect spot. He's run a lot of extra 16 meters to get there. He's probably tired. He cannot give up this spot. But he lets these guys come around him, and he ends up in the middle of the pack being boxed again. No, you've, you've worked hard to get there, Johnny. You've got to keep it. You've got to make everyone else behind you run a lot of extra ground on the turn. Instead, it's Gregoric that ends up running extra ground on the turn here again. He's right there. No, you've got to fight Centro. It's off. And now he's trying to push and shove, but he doesn't work. He gets passed again on the outside. Now he's boxed in again. Gregoric's running in lane two here because he did not hold his spot. Now he gets next to Blankenship here, you know, again. But we, we hit the bell here. You know, we hit the 1,200-meter uh, mark. And Blankenship's about to start racing, but he hasn't run extra ground. He's been on, the, on lane one the entire race. Ben's got plenty of run left. Gregoric doesn't have the run left here. Um... Ingles and Centrowitz have run pretty good tactical races throughout. This is actually the final turn of the race. It's the only turn of the race where Blankenship actually runs more ground than, than Gregorak. Blankenship's on the outside of lane one. Gregorak's on the inside. Congratulations, John. You saved 1.2 meters. You'd already already run, though, an extra 19 meters by this point when you do the math. So it takes us down to a net of 17.8, 17.9 meters. So, again, it's time to race. And Blankenship, he's only in one, two, three, four, five. He's in fifth or sixth place coming up to the final turn, but he saves so much ground. Everyone else around him has run much more ground. Look, sixth, fifth. He's in fifth now and then into fourth, and Blankenship is going to Worlds. Congratulations. You ran a good race. <sighs> Ingles wins. Blankenship goes to Worlds. And Gregoric goes home devastated because he ran a foolish race. So, folks, again, the takeaways from this is there's nothing wrong with making a big move if it's slow and tactical. But if you're going to run to the front, you've got to get to the front. Never run to the run wide and then don't get there. That's number one. Number two, if you get there, you've got to protect your position. These guys that were in the front, like Ingles, in the front, he never gave up the front. He never got boxed. He never had to run wide. 
he, he, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. So I, I could have focused on that, but I really wanted to focus on something that no one else is focusing on, which was the battle for the third spot. So there you have it. How not to run a 1500 by John Gregoric, how to run a 1500 by Ben Blankenship. Thank you so much. Talk to you guys later.